Right, we are back. So many of you tuned in and saw how I made this awesome etched effect coaster by using just a stencil and baby lotion. That was hashtag 184. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out. Now, I've seen lots of you posting your versions of these on Facebook, etc., and they are absolutely amazing. Be sure to tag me in those posts. Right, so we're going to try it again today, and as you can see underneath my two moulds here, I have a heat mat. I want to see if it will work, so we could demould these in around two hours. So I think I'm going to do just a butterfly in this one, and some leaves, I think in this leaf. But the good thing about this is that if I flip the stencil, I can, some of the designs, I can kind of change the way they look. And just make like an autumn piece again i'm probably good, just going to keep these clear just showing you what works and what doesn't work but because i'm using epoxy <laughs> i know it's becoming a bit of a rare thing on my channel at the moment i wanted to test this now i bought these on monday they arrived on tuesday now the the version that's available in america is a upgraded version of this and it's the ultra i'll pop the links in the description box below i have the ultra coming which is a much smarter device than this one the, the the ultra version has an ai button which automatically stirs for four minutes this one doesn't so i will be testing that one when it arrives but this this was what i was really interested in this holds the stirring device so you can hands free apparently mix your resin now the company i did message them after it arrived they have given me a 10 percent discount code which is also in the description box below for you to use so i've already had a quick look but i've put everything back to normal just so you can see how it comes in the box so this is just extendable with a clamp so you can adjust the height you've got a silicon base for your cup to go into and this is quite a weighty base and all we need to do is just one screw with the allen key that's provided it's that easy now i do have some other tech to be reviewing um, other mixing devices but i've also got an experiment of my own coming so all we do is just slot that into there and take our small screw and then just pop that in and tighten it up so there we have it excuse the hand gestures <laughs> and there is the silicon mat right so the mixer itself as i said i haven't got the ultra version version i've just got the pro and it is very very basic it takes four triple a batteries it's got a forward and a reverse but the good thing is it does come with four four ones i think they're all different sizes they look all, all different sizes i think the larger one is the same yeah it is and i think the two smaller ones look the same also yep they are so but you get four anyway so let's just see it makes it quite long so there is the switch to go one way and there is the switch to go the other again very very basic so i've got mine spaced probably 10 millimeters from the bottom of the cup i can move it up or down if i wanted to now i've gone with the bigger stirring ones for this one and it's just touching the sides of the cup which is a good thing because we do want it to mix the sides of the cup also but what i want to test is i have a let's resin stirring wand and i want to see if it fits in this brace now you can buy these stands just on their own you can buy it all as a kit it, it depends on what you want now i can't guarantee that other devices are going to fit into this but i do want to see if the let's resin one does and it does it actually does fit on there which is really handy so I could then attach my let's resin one which are obviously different sizes and then adjust the, the stand to that as well 
I mean, it's not designed for this staring wand, but it does it does fit, and I'm I'm certain that's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> so I'm just pouring my resin in now. Now I'm quite lucky, I do have the airless vacuum chamber, so if this does stir in bubbles, I can always use that. But I want to kind of see what it looks like without, see whether it stirs in any, any unwanted bubbles. We've got some in there already, just from pouring. So we just pop that on our silicon base, pop in our wand, adjust it to the height that we want it, and then turn it on. Now I do see that the actual wand itself is moving in the holder, so I need to clamp it down a little bit further. That's it, it's stopped moving now. Now the Ultra version has got three speeds, this one has only got the one speed, but this is actually doing an amazing job already. I've never actually, I've only used the Letch Resin one for a test I did. I didn't make a video on it, I just wanted to see if I could use it for the polyurethane resin. I've never used one of these for, for normal epoxy, but it's doing an absolutely amazing job already. And we're only just around about one minute coming up. So I'm going to leave this for a couple of minutes, but what I might do is just raise the the stirring wand up a little bit about halfway through and just because I, I want it to mix the whole lot but I don't know whether I'm going to need to as always massive shout out to my channel members anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks I will update that board very very soon on my community tab it's, it's not really stirring in any bubbles there's probably the same amount of bubbles in there as there was before maybe a few more Right, I'm going to leave it running for a few minutes. So I've just raised it up about 10 millimetres. You can see it is still mixing the bottom, even though it's not reaching. It really is whirling around nicely. And it's, it's great because whilst that's stirring that, I can get prepared. I could even, if I wanted to, I could even start with the baby lotion in the stencil. But it is important not to take your eye off the temperature of your resin because you don't want a flash cure. That's the good thing about the other version, the Ultra, is it does have that AI button, which I can't wait to test out. And I suppose if you want to make sure the sides are being scraped, you could always just move the cup slightly, I suppose. Okay, we're just hitting four minutes. So you can see, I, I did raise and lower the arm just to make sure that I've got kind of full coverage now what I would like to see <laughs> is the arm be able to go up enough to be able to let it stand so the resin can fall off of the actual stirring blade it, I can't do that without lifting the actual device from the arm which is not it's not perfect I would like to be able to kind of just let that stay for the resin to be able to fall off just to keep that a bit cleaner. But then I suppose that is also what this is for. I don't like it though, I'd rather get the excess off. Right, I don't see any streaks in there. That is just a reflection from the side of the cup. It looks good. It looks mixed. There's, there's less bubbles in there than there would be if I stirred this manually. Okay, let's move on. I'm quite happy with that. So on with the coasters. I'm calling this technique the swipe and wipe. Now somebody did mention it sounds like something you'd do in the bathroom. <laughs> but at least it stays, it sticks, doesn't it? So we're just going to place our stencils. I'm not bothering with a spray this time. I don't think it really helped. So again, I'm just using baby lotion. I haven't tested anything else. Lots of you have asked if it would work with other stuff. I really, I haven't got that far with the experiments yet. So we just apply that over the stencil. And then we take our plastic card. You could use anything that's kind of a credit card. Just don't break it and blame me. <laughs> and we just, I love this technique. It is so easy. If it goes wrong, you can just wipe it off. Let's start again. 
And then we carefully just lift the stencil up and peel it away. Just make sure it doesn't slide and disturb what we've put down. And again, any excess, this is the great thing, any mess just wipes away. So in my previous video, I did mention about not using a heat map because what happens is the, the baby, baby lotion will lower viscosity, but the same as the resin does. The resin will lower viscosity with the heat from the heat map also. But what I'm thinking is it works with UV resin, which does create a lot of heat during the curing process. So I think this could work. I haven't got my heat mat on yet. Just, you know, bear that in mind. I will, I will turn this on once my resin is in the mold. I'll keep it fairly simple. I don't want to go too overboard. So I'd recommend definitely doing this before you start mixing your resin because this can, depending on the design, it can take some time and in that time some of my bubbles have risen to the surface so as mentioned in the previous video make sure you've got a clear pour space so i'm not pouring the resin directly onto the design so that i know it's not going to disturb that lotion now some of you mentioned what if you colored the lotion i really don't think it would work that way because it's not it's not resin based. I mean, you could probably, you might be able to get it to work with something different. Now we are still in the experimental stages, so I'm sure I'll crack something for you. And also, like many of you said in the the other videos comments, you could you could yet yeah, you could make molds from these. It's that good. And I have seen. I don't know whether I've already mentioned it back in the video at the beginning that. You can actually use lettering as well, but just remember that you place them in the right way because when you demold, it's going to be in reverse. Okay, all poured. I've just turned on my heat mat. I've put it on full power because if I'm going to test it, I'm going to go all out. But what I am going to do is just work out any bubbles that are in the corners off camera. Let's do a time check. It is 25 to 12. Okay, see you shortly. So we're just coming up to 40 minutes and I wanted to show you more so on the leaves. See those tiny micro bubbles? I presume those are bubbles that were in the lotion. Now that one is the worst one of them, but I'm just wondering if that is going to affect the piece. I mean, it doesn't look like they're floating up through the resin. It could just add some texture. Who knows? Well, right, I'll see you for the demold. So we are ready to demold. A lot quicker than I imagined. So what's that? 90 minutes? And they are ready to demold. And you can just see if I push underneath, that liquid is moving around. I say liquid, I mean the baby lotion. So it did lower the viscosity quite a lot. I don't think those bubbles are going to be anything to worry about though. Right, I'm going to let them cool down for about 10 minutes and then we'll pop them out. Right, they've all cooled down. And it's time to just clean them up. And this is where the wipe comes in from the swipe and wipe. <laughs> Does it come off as easy as it did before? Yes. Use a little bit of alcohol if you want. You can see those dots from the bubbles. So maybe the heat is just not a good idea. We'll see. Let's get some alcohol in there. Let's try and work out that lotion from inside those little bubbles. Squeaky! Okay, so there are the leaves. Now this is what can happen if you don't clear up the lotion enough. You're left with an etching of it. We've got a lot of bubbles but there's a really nice texture to them compared to the way that I've done them before. So the butterfly turned out much better. It really has got some texture. Right, I think I might colour this one in and just see what it looks like afterwards. And to do that, I'm just going to use some acrylic paint. You can seal it in afterwards if you want. 
or you could colour UV resin and do it that way. Entirely up to you. I don't like it. <laughs> I really don't like it. It's taken away, for me, it's taken away the whole idea of a piece being etched. I mean, we could all just use a stencil and just paint on that design and then top coat it with resin and it's still going to... For me, it's just... I don't like it. <laughs> this is what we want i mean we can we can kind of color our resin or do different projects to get this this effect okay so i owe this idea to mrs cooper <laughs> after i washed away the paint she said the only thing that i think would work is those nail powders you've got so i've gone in with some different colors in the etched areas and i'm just topping it up with clear uv I don't want to use a black or white UV resin. I just want to keep it clear. So hopefully it will still give us that nice etched look. So I'm just applying it bit by bit and then just using the tool just to spread it out. Trying to be careful not to go over the edges because that will, where I've made a bit of a mess with the powder, that will Leave it untidy. Now I can cure that with my light and then wash away or wipe away any of the excess afterwards. Now if this doesn't work, there's no way <laughs> of rescuing it. Now that is much better. I did sadly scratch the resin when trying to panic and clean off that acrylic paint, but it looks a lot better than what it did. I really like that now. So I then decided to do this one with a gold. And look at those leaves. Again, ignore the resin scratches and imperfections, but it's just showing you that is incredible. And the texture makes it look so much better now. They look like real leaves. And we've kept that kind of etched design where it's see-through. Right, hope you enjoyed this one. I will see you for the next one. Bye for now.